True Sound Studios is in your ears. Okay guys, so welcome back to the building of the new True Sound Studios right here at my house. As you can see the uh, house is really coming together here. And right here are all of the studio doors. Those are one and three quarter inch solid core doors. And I've walked down this hallway. This is the mudroom entryway to the studio. So uh, this got actually really beaten up because of, <laughs> this is how I got all the materials in and out of this area. That's the outside. It's really the outside. So there's the outside. So this is how I was able to bring in all the materials. I just bring them right through this door and then right into the studio. So let's go in on in here. Ah, the entire studio, so the control room and the live room, um, got primed with what's called PBA. It's new drywall paint. It's a primer. And so um, I used a sprayer for that. And then I just got done spraying the ceiling because the walls are going to be fully covered so you actually won't see any of the walls. But I still put some paint on there. It acts as a good sealant. And uh, then we can make our way into the live room. I just literally did this last night. <sighs> so you can see um, in here, the live room in here, much different acoustics. <laughs> so this room is definitely going to need to be tamed. And it's got the, the nice dead flat white paint on the ceiling. I just got to touch up around things like this, like around the, uh, the HVAC vents, because I taped them off so no paint would get in there. So yeah, obviously before I painted, um, all the drywall was taped, mudded, and sanded, and that was not done by me. I don't like doing that, nor am I very good at it, so I paid somebody to help me do that. And so now I can go ahead and start installing this subfloor panel. Now what this is, is a insulation. So this is an R9 insulation. It's about two inches thick, and it has um, some maybe half inch, five eighths, OSB on the top. You can see it's like a tongue and groove and you use these like plastic strips to connect them all together. This is obviously one tile. These are two foot by four foot and you lay them on the floor and they're meant for retrofitting garages and basements to be able to make them you know really livable comfortable spaces. Now two reasons I'm using this. Number one, my town is making me insulate the floor. I don't have a choice. I have to put some sort of insulation on the floor in a vapor barrier. It is part of the energy code, so I have to do it. Number two, um, by doing this, because the foam is glued to the OSB, it essentially stops that residence because it's kind of acts like one big solid mass. Now, once again, um, this was approved by John Brandt so I feel like, you know, this is a, a good option for me. Essentially, all I'm doing is building, I guess you would call it a stage in the middle of the room. Okay, so the walls are totally decoupled from everything else. And now I'm just kind of raising up my floor by putting this in. And obviously the insulation, the vapor barrier part, and the fact that I have a solid subfloor um, is a huge benefit. So yeah, so that is the next thing on the list, is to start installing this.
Okay guys, so all the flooring is done. That means the subfloor in both rooms is done and I literally just finished all of the finished flooring. So enough with the flooring. Now I can go ahead and kind of build this last wall, which is for the closet. And it might be a bathroom at some point, um, but definitely right now it's just gonna be just a closet. And I just gotta build a wall. It's actually gonna go up about seven feet and I'm gonna have storage that faces out into the live room. And then also have a door that I can tuck things I don't wanna see away. <clears throat> so it'll be kind of like a, I guess a drum display case up top. And then the rest will be for, you know, microphones, mic stands, you know, all the rest of the stuff that I have that I don't need to use on an everyday basis. So the reason I didn't build this wall during the entire framing process is because I wanted to enclose this entire room so that this whole thing was soundproof. So that I didn't have to put some sort of crazy door for my closet, you know, that would have to be soundproof to, you know, to stop the noise from going out then. So by just wrapping this whole room in the double 5 8 drywall, now it's all soundproof and now I can just build a, you know, I guess you would call it kind of like a false wall. It's just a, a non-load bearing wall. It's literally just gonna be a couple feet long with a doorway in between. Okay, so just real quick through this closet together, a couple of little small walls, the doorway in the middle there, a ceiling made out two by twos, which will be reinforced later with the acoustic treatment. And that's like the shelf for the drums that will be exposed to the room. So now into the control room, I finally started um, building all of the acoustic treatment. I had to go out and buy about 90 more pieces of lumber. You can see here um, the front wall. This is the front wall of the control room with the angled walls here. And then we got some splayed walls on the side. And this helps break up the flutter echo between the parallel surfaces. This is a whole look of the room uh, pretty close to being done. You can see both walls on both the side walls have been finished and those are all splayed. And then the very front wall where the two big black speakers are, that is the front of the control room. So just kind of like a little quick look. I know it's a little tough to tell the splay on these walls, the angles with the wide angle lens, but everything is leaning one way or another, nothing's square. And you can see the front wall here. We got the two speakers that will be soffit mounted and just the other side wall, which is the same. Okay, so as you can see behind me, uh, things are really progressing as far as getting this whole place together. Um, I've added a ton of wiring, so this really kind of quickly, I just want to go over exactly what I've done. So when you first walk into the studio right here, you can see this is going to be kind of like the master control section. So we got the main white lighting. Um, there's two different switches to kind of control the, you know, the, the ambiance of the room. This will be for all of the LEDs and there will be a lot in here. And then the filming lights, uh, obviously when I'm filming, you know, the videos and intros and outros and all that. I got my thermostat for my heating and cooling system and then Somewhere down here will be my ventilator controller to allow the fresh air in. And you can see I got a speaker wire here. This is for the rear um, surround sound. And it kind of runs over to here. Nothing fancy, but we got some power, which will be for just a standard outlet. And then an LED um, wire. So this will power one set of LEDs. And then here, <coughs> Uh, two of these is for these two right here. These two are for um, powered speakers for mixing in surround sound. So I'm going to be trying to um, at some point get good at mixing Dolby Atmos surround sound so that I actually have powered speakers. So I'll have powered monitor speakers, studio monitors, and they will, um, the signal will come through these. So one will be for the rear and one will be for the sides. And then um, right here, this is just an, this is a, a line cable. I don't know what I'll use it for. Maybe headphones, sending stereo. I, it could be for whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then we kind of travel down here a little further and we got some more power for, um, you know, just a standard outlet. And then another set of speaker wire. Now, the reason I have speaker wire here 
and down there. And then I also have the line ties for the surround sound is I first want to watch a whole bunch of movies in Dolby Atmos surround sound so that I can kind of try to understand how you know it all kind of ties in because it's a very new thing for me to mix surround sound. I'm really excited to do it. It'll be a new fun thing for me but I've just never done it before so that's why I have the speaker cable so I can just hook up standard home theater speakers and then in the future I will buy studio monitors to replace those um, so that I can start mixing in that Dolby Atmos setup. Um, and obviously there's more speakers I have to add but um, yeah so back to that. So then another set of um, LED wires um, which will be for another section of LEDs and then you can see all those cables kind of run through here and then they go up to here and this is just a home theater uh, amp right now just so I can have my my speakers you know have some music in here while I'm listening the receiver and then right here this is going to be all of the speaker connections so for the entire surround sound system any speaker that is built into the wall um, or has connections will all come to here and terminate here with um, some nice um, banana jacks uh, I think that's what they're called and then we have 20 amp power, so this is going to be powering all the gear. Now there's one here, and there's one on the other side, you can't really see it. This is going to handle all of the gear. Now there's only 10 actual physical plug outlets for this gear section, but um, if you guys are like me, you run power conditioners, you have more than enough outlets. And then over here, this is that tie line for just that pair of uh, line signal cables that I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with but that'll run to right here and then um, you can see all those wires kind of travel over to here this is another 20 amp outlet and this will be for I don't know, whatever else <laughs> um, here's a whole bunch of cat5 cables now this one happens to run to the very very back of the room right over there um, not really sure what I'm going to use it for, but it is there just in case I have, you know, a, a need in the future. Uh, this Cat5 is for my mic movers, um, so I can eventually hook those up. And then I have something called a, a BPM helper. It's for drummers to kind of help them play to a metronome if they're not that great. And then this is a 15 amp circuit. This is the outlets that run all along the studio. So this is a obviously a much different power than this one. This is 20 amp, this is just for gear. This will probably just be for my TV and my uh, uh, security system monitors. So then we got those cables kind of run over to here. And then over here, this is going to be my patch for my surround sound um, powered studio monitors. So that's where all four of these come from. And then kind of continue over here. Right here, this is the security surveillance system. So all my cameras are monitored through here. Um, this will take care of eight different cameras and then there's actually another system that goes up here that will monitor the rest. And I have my reasons for doing that, but either way, um, all the camera wires you can see kind of in the back there. Those are the power adapters. I even put this little fan here just so that I can pull some of that hot air out of there just so that you know the power adapters don't break down as much and you know there is a hard drive in here. So anyways that is that little system. If we go right below here here's more Cat5. And then last um, just another uh, two more duplex outlets for the studio gear. And then this is a little, <clears throat> this is what I did in the last studio. Now. Right now I just have these tied together because I need to buy another another electrical box that actually has, I can put three switches in. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to put a switch on the, the hot, I'm going to put a switch on the ground and a switch on the neutral. So these will actually have three switches and I'll be able to totally disconnect not just the hot but also the neutral and the grounds from all the power. So when you turn these three switches off, it is like a total, total disconnect. And that is just to prevent any issues um, with the outside world, like lightning strikes and things like that from happening if I know there's gonna be some bad weather. Those cables kinda then 
come over to here. We got more um, wire just, just for outlets, standard outlets. And then more of the same thing on the other side over here, just more LED cables, speaker for the side speakers. That is actually HDMI. That, is, that runs into the live room also. And uh, here, these, these will be probably my speakers um, for my surround sound for the time being. These are Polk Audio RT8s, I believe these are. Um, it's an older speaker, but I have four of these, so I think these are gonna be my speakers that I listen to, the Dolby Atmos, at least for sides and rears um, for the time being. And then, um, once again, I got the, the lines for the powered surround sound speakers in the future. And then here, these are the speaker cables that are for guitar or bass amps, so I can put the head in the control room and then put the cab in the live room. This is just an instrument cable that goes into the live room. Um, some more power for an outlet. And then this is another like little mini snake cable four channel um, that will actually runs all the way back over to the center section over there. And that's just to tie in once again other things in the future if I decide to need them. Okay, so when I'm talking about this ledge, it's, it's really kind of like maybe an open soffit. And the reason I wanna do this is because at each one of these uprights, we'll call them, I wanna have white down lighting. So this will be like the main bright light in the studio when you just wanna have white light. <laughs> and this soffit will be maybe two, three inches thick and this will also help hide the 16 color LEDs that of course I'll have to put up there to do some up lighting. And then also it kind of creates this, this space up here, about 16 inches that I'm able to create another base trap in if I need to, um, because this is another corner. This is a corner right here and there's a good possibility that I might have to do some base trapping up here. Um, I'm gonna have acoustic panels that kind of come down on an angle to help out with the whole ceiling absorption. And I wanted to make sure that this soffit, I guess we'll call it, is out of the way so that I can have all my acoustic panels on this angle and it's not gonna interfere with that. Let's take a look at how all these walls are splayed. Not the easiest thing to show you, but you can see this wall is actually leaning in. So it's going like this. And then this next section here is actually leaning out and then it restarts again and another one coming out. The exact same thing happens over here. And if we look at the front wall, you can see this section here that has the speaker in it, and then this section here, these are both angled in towards this middle section. And this middle section is actually leaning into the room. So it's a little tough to tell, maybe if you look where the speakers are, you can see that this is leaning in, so this, this top is actually leaning into the room. And then you can see these base traps in the corner here, well, I'll be able to fill with fiberglass insulation. This is about 21 inches at the biggest part. And then also I have left this big opening right here. This is for diaphragmatic absorber, and obviously a very big absorber. This is actually the dimensions for that absorber. Um, so it's a, a membrane trap is what, people also refer to it as, so you can see 15, uh, 57 inches wide. And that's why this opening is just so big because I'm gonna have a big diaphragmatic absorber here. And then there'll actually be another one in front of here that actually kind of acts as a speaker stand. And then another one over here. And then last, I'll have another same size diaphragmatic absorber here that actually kind of goes into this opening a little bit. And then same thing over here. Now, all of these, okay, all these splayed walls will be filled with um, some sort of insulation. Um, the corners will probably be fiberglass and then the rest of it will be rock sole, rock wool, whatever you wanna call it. Now, how much insulation goes into these walls is really going to depend on how this room sounds after I start doing some measurements. Because though these cavities might be six, 21 inches, you know, eight inches, I mean, some of them are really big, some are smaller, depending on the splay of the wall. 
I don't want this room to be ridiculously dead. Super, super dead, overabsorbed room is not good. You still need, you know, it has to be a good level of absorption. You have to have a good level of diffusion. It's not just absorb as much as you can and that'll be good. Um, I want this room to be as good as humanly possible. So what I'm gonna do is after I've framed out all this acoustic treatment, I'm going to start with one layer of insulation. So I'm just gonna put up three inches thick of insulation and I'll put this all around the room and I will put my main Dyn Audio speakers in here. That's what I'm gonna use as my reference. And I will run some pink noise through there with a measurement microphone. And I will start to gather some data essentially on how this room is reacting. Now it just might turn out that that three inches is all I'm gonna need because of how I built the room and the, the dimensions that I've spent a lot of time on, but it could turn out to be not enough. So it's just, I'm gonna put up a layer, I'm gonna measure the whole room, and then I'll kind of figure out, do I need to take some stuff away? Do I need to add more? How is the low end acting in the room? How is, you know, it's gotta be a good balance. I can't just put this all up, cover it in fabric and go, okay, it's gotta be good. And there's really, really no other way to do it than build and then test and then change and test until you figure it out. All right guys, so that is it. I just kinda wanted to give you guys an update on what's going on. I thought I'd be a little further along by now, but you know, as is life, things take a little longer than I expect. <laughs> is typical. By the next video, I should have, you know, all that stuff wrapped up and have at least started on the diaphragmatic absorption, which I will show you guys how to build. Also the quadratic diffusers. I'm sure that'll be a whole video right there. And then getting into the other things like bringing all the studio gear and hooking all that stuff up. I'm going to show you guys that entire process. And I'm really looking forward to that because I really can't wait to be able to put my gear in that room and really see how it all sounds all together. So as always, I really appreciate you guys watching these videos and all the support you guys have given me um, through all this. It's just been, uh, it's been a really, really great experience and you know, it's been really fun for me to share all this information that you know, I've learned. All right, so I will keep working on this studio and I will see you guys in another video. So thank you for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, click that like button and consider subscribing for more content. So not only do I make YouTube videos, but I also produce tracks and I can mix and master your music. So once again, thank you for watching this video. I'm Wiesna and True Sound Studios is in your ears.